I'm very happy and honored to introduce to you Sota Watanabe. He is a CEO and founder of Asta Network. Prior to creating Smart Contract Hub for Wasm EVM and one of the top parachains on Polkadot, he was the director of Japan Blockchain Association. And one good news for him this year, he is selected among Forbes 30 under 30. Asta Network is designed to have all necessary features to become a hub for smart contracts on Polkadot. So now, Sota will share with us why Asta is the future of multi-chain smart contract. So now, let's welcome Sota Sang. Hello everyone. Oh, it's very loud. Um, thank you very much for the great introduction and thank you very much for uh, hosting such a great event, event and Nicole. Um, I think there is a translator in the, you know, translation is really tough because, you know, I'm speaking English and they have to translate in Vietnamese. So I'm going to speak as slow as possible. And the, I spoke with some of the people in the venue and I realized that there are many developers here. But at the same time, there are many non-developer people. So I'm going to speak technical contents as easy as possible. But uh, feel free to reach out to me because I love tech. And the, if you'd like to speak about technical feature, uh, please reach out to me after the presentation. So uh, my today's topic is the future of smart contract for multi-chain. Uh, a little bit about myself. My name is Sota Watanabe, founder of Asta Network. Uh, I'm originally from Japan, but uh, I live in Singapore right now because of a lot of the reason, complicated. <laughs> um, I joined the Polkadot ecosystem back in 2019. And at that time, Polkadot was super small, but right now it is really huge and recognized as one of the leading blockchains. And it was made by Gavin Wood. Gavin is the founder, co-founder of the Ethereum, the CTO, and founder of Polkadot. And I started Asta Network back in 2020. So we have been developing Asta Network for more than 2.5 years, but uh, we launched the mainnet in January this year. And outside of the Polkadot ecosystem, uh, I am a director of Japan Blockchain Association. And otherwise in the Dentsu, which is the biggest advertisement agency in Asia, and so on. So uh, uh, a little bit about Polkadot. So Polkadot is the uh, heterogeneous uh, multi-chain layer, layer zero, for layer one networks. And we are making layer one blockchain in a Polkadot ecosystem. The reason is Polkadot connect blockchains, but Polkadot itself does not support smart contract function. So if you would like to develop something on the top of Polkadot, you have to choose layer one blockchain to build on. And this is where Asta Networks comes in. And when it comes to smart contract, you have a two choice, like Ethereum virtual machine or WebAssembly. So Ethereum, but everyone's known Ethereum virtual machine because it is super popular. But few one knows WebAssembly, so I'm going to speak about WebAssembly a little bit later. But it's like, you know, Windows OS and Mac OS. So EVM is Windows OS because it's very used, but there are a lot of the limitation and it's a little bit obsolated. And WebAssembly is Mac, it's more sophisticated and made by big tech giants in Web2 space. <laughs> Let's move on. Um, Again, Asta Network is the future of smart contract platform for multi-chain. So the, the po important point is the future of smart contract, uh, which is WebAssembly, and also multi-chain. Yeah, uh, this is what I'm going to talk about today. Uh, first one is the problem of the multi-chain landscape today, and uh, solution, and uh, since I came from Japan, and recently, uh, yesterday, um, we announced that we're gonna enter the Japanese market. I mean, our token will be listed in Japan from next Monday. So I'm going to speak about, a little bit about Japanese context. And last one is conclusion. So let's start from problem. 
Yeah, uh, the problem of multi-chain landscape is right now is the concept of multi-chain is just to copy and paste 3D codes in another EVM chain. I, a lot of the projects are claiming we are multi-chain project, but what they are doing is copy and paste codes, which is not too innovative. And as a result, there are a lot of silo. So, for example, I'm making, let's say I'm making Uniswap, and I fork my Uniswap codes and deploy on a star. You can do it, because we have an Ethereum virtual machine, but the problem is, you have to, we have to create the liquidity from zero. So, Uniswap contract on Asta cannot access to liquidity on Ethereum, even though code is the same. So this is now, and it will be the future. The left one is the future, and right one is now. So it is possible, absolutely possible, to fork Uniswap version two or version one and deploy in another EVM chain, like, you know, a star. But, um, you know, we cannot access Ethereum liquidity from a star. And if you would like to bridge Ethereum token to a star, or maybe Ethereum token to Avalanche, it's very dangerous, right? Because we saw a lot of the bridge hack in this year. And this is the single point of failure. But uh, in the future, I think blockchain will be connected in a protocol level. So Aswap, which is one of the DEX in our ecosystem, can access Uniswap liquidity from Astar. So you don't need to deploy another EVM, you know, EVM code on Astar because you can access Ethereum liquidity from Astar. So this is the concept of the multi-chain into 2023, I believe. Um, yeah, and also we analyzed all the L1 blockchains in a blockchain ecosystem. And we found, found that a native project that leverage its platform feature actually uh, survive, will be survived in the long run. Um, this is a data in a blue market. So this data is very different from now. But let's say this is the Ethereum, this is the Polygon, and uh, top 10 projects actually own a lot of the total value locked, TVL. So total value locked is the most, one of the most important metrics we should follow as a layer one blockchain. And top 10 project of the Ethereum own 77% of total value locked. I don't know how many dApps Ethereum has. I'm sure more than, let's say, 10,000 10, or something. But uh, top 10 own 77. In, in case of Polygon, uh, I missed the total amount, but uh, maybe 80% or something. Yeah, Polygon own 75 to 80% of the, the total body lock is owned by top 10. And uh, in terms of the Polygon, in interesting analysis was that the second biggest one is QuickSwap. Even the Uniswap was on Polygon. Because QuickSwap is very optimized for Polygon. So let's say if, if you deploy Uniswap on Polygon, Uniswap is well known in our Ethereum ecosystem. So you know, if you use Uniswap on Polygon and Ethereum, you have to manage two, two address, I mean same address in a two different networks. So in, in the future, it, it must be very you know, easy for all people to use a single network with a lot of uh, applications, rather than connecting, connecting a lot of the different networks. Uh, this is also um, data on Avalanche and Solana in April. Uh, top 10 project on 98% in terms of Avalanche, and Solana on 76. And there are you know, a lot of the unique uh, projects. So there are some Ethereum projects like Av, Curve, and so on. 
but, uh, unique projects on very high total value locked. It, it was really surprising for, for me, and our strategy is not just developing um, uh, ecosystem native projects right now. But in the long run, we have to invite Ethereum big project into Astar, and then native project and big project grow together. Uh, and the problem number two is the Ethereum virtual machine has a lot of the limitation, technical limitation. And some major layer ones do not support the Ethereum virtual machine, such as Solana. So to connect blockchains, we have to have uh, multiple virtual machines. That is easier. And the technical limitation of the Ethereum virtual machine is the low performance and limited language. And it's mainly for Ethereum developer. I will be speaking about WebAssembly data and going to compare Ethereum virtual machine and WebAssembly. And Gavin is the founder of Polkadot and founder of the Ethereum. And he is also uh, one of the creators of Ethereum virtual machine. And he thinks that Ethereum virtual machine is super, super important right now. But the future is going to be WebAssembly. Yeah. Uh, problem number three is uh, developers are the most important human resource, I mean talents, in a blockchain space. But when they deploy smart contract, they have to pay gas fee. So which means they are losing money by making contract. So blockchain is all about incentive design. But incentive design here is completely broken because the developer is paying money to contribute to the ecosystem. So this is what we would like to fix. So we have a three solution, uh, WebAssembly smart contract and Ethereum virtual machine. We, we are calling cross virtual machine because we are supporting Ethereum virtual machine as well as uh, WebAssembly at the same time and make them interoperable. It might be a little bit difficult to understand what you guys are doing right now. Let's say, you know, some people are using Mac, some people are using Windows, and there is an application called PowerPoint, and you can use PowerPoint on the top of Ethereum, sorry, uh, Mac, and also on the top of Windows. And even though you are using Windows, you can transfer PowerPoint file to Mac user and vice versa. So we are having two virtual machines, Ethereum virtual machine and WebAssembly, and make them interactive. And second solution is DAPS staking. Um, people can stake their token on DAPS, on Asta network. So let's say, so Lo, Lo is there, so founder of Kaiba. So Kaiba deploy on Asta. Asta token holder can stake Asta token on Kaiba. And then Kaiba, Kaiba team can get a basic income from block rewards based on their contribution to the network. And they have to pay gas fee, but this basic income is much higher than the gas fee. So they can earn token by making smart contract on Asta. And I'm going to explain how token economics works. And last one is XCMP, which is super technical. So, uh, XCMP is um, cross-chain messaging passing in a Polkadot ecosystem. It is, yeah, you can consider this as a trustless bridge. Right now, a lot of the problem are happening in a trusted bridge space, but this is trustless bridge in a Polkadot ecosystem. So when you transfer token from parachain, I mean Polkadot chain A to Polkadot chain B, which is really trustless, so there is absolutely you know, small risk right now. But the problem right now is if we transfer our token from Polkadot ecosystem to other, another, Pol another ecosystem like Ethereum, there is no trustless bridge. And the, we are trying to make trust minimize the bridge together with our ecosystem project to make um, interoperable network. So, yeah. Um, Let's see more about the, yeah, let's see more about multi-chain, I mean XCMP, and also DAP staking, and uh, WebAssembly smart contract. 
So Asta is going to connect all the major Wari one blockchain. Right now we have already connected Binance Smart Chain, uh, Ethereum, Polygon, and Polkadot. And the Polkadot bridge is really trustless right now, thanks to Polkadot. And Binance bridge, Polkadot, uh, Polygon bridge, and Ethereum bridge are really trusted right now. But uh, we are going to create trustless bridge together with Sigma, which is created by Chainsafe and also LCP, which is created by Data Chain. Uh, Data Chain is one of the top projects in Japan. And we are going to connect our blockchain to Cosmos and Strana and the branch as well. So, and I would like to speak a, a little bit about Polkadot. Polkadot. And Polkadot consists of the Relay Chain and the Parachain. The relay chain is the center of the Polkadot. And the parachain is the blockchain that is connected to the relay chain. And the relay chain is the heart of the Polkadot, which does not support smart contract by design. And the parachain is here. Yeah, Asta is here. Uh, parachain is the own blockchain, which has own logic, such as smart contract chain, DeFi chain, NFT chain, and so on. And if we connect our blockchain to Polkadot, uh, we have already connected. And then we can interact with chain, other chain, like chain B, chain A, chain D, C, and so on. And it's trustless bridge. And another benefit is uh, making the one blockchain from scratch is really tough in terms of security. So anyone can make the one blockchain. I can make SOTA blockchain in 30 minutes. But the uh, problem is security. So if the, my chain is run by two validator or three validator, it's super easy to be hacked if it is permissionless blockchain. Right? And we, we, we are making blockchain from scratch. So this is the reason why we connected our blockchain to Polkadot. And we can bring. Um, our security from relay chain to parachain. And Polkadot has six billion or seven billion to, uh, token variation security. So we can bring seven billion security from Polkadot to Asta. So even though our variation right now is a couple hundred million, but uh, our security is billions. So by connecting our blockchain to Polkadot, we would like to realize um, the true interoperability for multi-chain. And in the future, as I said, um, you know, blockchain will be connected in a protocol level, not in application level. So we would like to connect our protocol to multiple networks so that uh, uh, the developer on Asta network can access to liquidity in a lot of the networks. And ideally, it will be one click in terms of the UI and the UX. So I would like to make an application which allow you, allow users to you know, use ECDM liquidity or Solana liquidity, Avalanche liquidity within a click. Yep. And second one is the basic income for developer. As I said, the developer is the most important human resource in the blockchain space, but they are paying a lot of the money to contribute to the ecosystem. So we distribute basic income for developer, and I'm going to explain how we made it possible. So we invented DAPS staking. Um, people can, uh, this is our portal. Portal is going to be more sophisticated. And we are making, uh, I would say, Apple Store for Web3. And a lot of the project will be listed here. And I can stake Asta token on smart contract application. Like, I can stake my token on Sirius Finance, which is stablecoin swap. Uh, I can stake my Asta token on Asta Farm, which is the gamify project on Asta. Even I can stake my token on infrastructure project, such as Alchemy or maybe Blockdemon. And we can see how many tokens are staked 
on each project. And the, how many people actually staked their token on projects. So we can see number of the people and number of the amount. And based on the number of the people and number of the amounts, we are going to distribute basic income from block rewards. So block is mined, right, and their inflation. And the inflation goes to not only for validator, but also for smart contract developer. This is pretty unique because uh, a lot of the layer one foundation distribute grant from their original portion, let's say 10% of their token allocation. But 10% is the number, right? So which is really limited, only 10%. But this basic income comes from new block, block revenue, I mean block inflation. So it is unlimited. Yeah, um, I'm going to explain how token economics works. So let's say Asta's variation is uh, one billion, just an example. There, and we have a roughly 10% inflation per year. So 100 million is going to be issued per year. And 10% goes to validator, and 40% goes to treasury, and 50% goes to ecosystem people, developer and ecosystem DAPS staker. People can stake token on DAPS or infrastructure project, and then they can get uh, staking rewards. In this example, which is here, 10 million. And 40 million goes to developer. And developer join our ecosystem because they can earn token while you're making smart contract. And the more dApps are created, so we have an incentive for dApps developer or infrastructure project. And the more dApps are created, the more tokens should be locked because number of the option is increasing. And the more tokens are staked, the less, to the, the less tokens in a circulation. And price is generally speaking determined by demand and supply, so there is a positive feedback on our valuation. And valuation becomes two billion, and we can distribute to 200 million, and we can, you know, we have a more bigger, bigger uh, incentive for developer, and then more applications comes in, and more token will be locked, and there are less circulation in our ecosystem. So there is positive feedback. So we would like to realize a developer-centric platform where they will be rewarded based on contribution. And we also support, um, another feature we support is WebAssembly and Ethereum virtual machine. And we are calling it cross virtual machine because we are supporting Ethereum virtual machine and WebAssembly at the same time. But I think many people are not familiar with WebAssembly. And WebAssembly is the next virtual machine for the blockchain developer. And it is developed by Web2 giants, such as Google, uh, Amazon, Mozilla, and so on. So having WebAssembly means unlocking Web3 to Web2 developer. Ethereum virtual machine is great, and I like it. But uh, Ethereum virtual machine is mainly for Ethereum developer. And the number of the, the population of Web2 developer is much bigger than Ethereum developer. And this is the reason why we would like to support WebAssembly and Ethereum virtual machine at the same time. And right now, the population of the WebAssembly developer is increasing, but uh, Ethereum virtual machine is super important. So we would like to make it interactive. So having two virtual machines, EVM and WebAssembly at the same time, and make them interoperable, interactive, is a key, for, uh, is a key to success. So again, having WebAssembly means unlocking Web3 for Web2 developer, and this is what we would like to do. And uh, I have uh, six minutes, so I would like to talk about uh, our Japanese narrative so 
without, without any doubt, uh, we are recognized as the leading chain, layer one blockchain in Japan. And uh, recently, Japanese government made uh, Web3 as a na national strategy. So the government would like to push Web3. The reason is simple. We completely lost in Web2. <laughs> a lot of the people are using Google, Facebook, Microsoft. It's, it's OK. But uh, you know, there are very few company, few Web2 company, global company in Japan. Sony was great. Uh, Toyota was great. But it's not a web company. <laughs> so the government would like to push Web3 forward. And they made Web3 as a national strategy and going to change tax and law. Yeah, uh, and the government create a Web3 team within a uh, uh, ruling party. And the left one is the, oh, the, the title is Web3 is a new capitalism. <laughs> which, is, which is interesting. And the left one is the chairman of Web3 group at the gov uh, government, and right one is the, the digital minister of the Japanese government. Uh, I'm going to talk with him uh, next, week, next week. So Web3 is a really important narrative in Japan. And the, I think we are recognized as the leading blockchain in Japan. Uh, this is the survey conducted by Japan Blockchain Association. And the question is, which chain you would like to build on? And the 43.4% out of 332 votes chose a star, which is good. And as you know, Japan is one of the most restricted countries, like US. So we finally entered the Japanese market from yesterday. And Japanese company and people can finally purchase and trade our stuff from on 26, uh, which is a little bit ironic. I'm a Japanese founder, but the Japan is the last market which we enter. Um, yeah, so from next week, we would like to use that momentum to make strong presence not only in Asia, but also in the US. Uh, yeah, I can speak this. In, and another great news is, um, you know, SEC is getting stricter and stricter. But uh, this thing, our talk in Japan, means Jap Japanese government recognizes ASTA as a cryptocurrency, not security. So this makes much more easier for us to do a business development and a marketing in the market. And more and more great announcements will be published next week. So yeah, conclusion. Uh, Multi-chain future is inevitable. But we have to change the concept of the multi-chain. It's not just copy and paste. We need more trustless bridge. Trust minimizes the bridge. And we have to connect our protocol layer, not application layer. And to do so, we need more reliable infrastructure, like Oracle, um, you know, trustless bridge, and, and multi-chain dApps and more. And Polkadot is the great starting point because parachain, Polkadot chain, Polkadot layer one blockchain uh, transaction is really trustless. And we also have build to earn concept we distribute basic income for developer. And we also have XVM, uh, which is the communication between Ethereum virtual machine and WebAssembly. To buy leveraging XVM, build to earn, trustless bridge, we would like to be recognized as the, the promising layer on blockchain in the multi-chain era. Yep, uh, as always, we are hiring. Uh, we recently raised 25 million, led by Polychain, backed by Coinbase, uh, Crypto.com, Binance, and so on. So we have a long runway. And we would like to accelerate our growth during the bear market. So we are hiring WebAssembly smart contract developer, senior substrate developer. A substrate is like a blockchain framework for Polkadot. Uh, and also developer relationship, 
and developer operations. Yep, uh, thank you very much for listening to my talk, and feel free to reach out to me after the party. Thank you. Thank you very much.